All righty, boys and girls, it's time. Creality has followed up with their previous problematic firmware, 1.3.28. That problem was a leveling issue that could cause a leveling mistake, causing the nozzle to grind into the bed. However, not everybody experienced that issue. My K1 never experienced that issue and has been running that firmware to this day. That said, Creality has released a new firmware, not only rectifying that problem, but rectifying other problems, improving certain things and adding some new features. Let's have a look at it. Here we are looking at version 1.3.2.20. This is for the K1 and K1 Max. You've got an OTA update that is over the air. In other words, the machine will prompt you for a firmware update and download and install that update via the internet. You may also download it manually, put it on a USB drive and install it yourself. This is not something you should need to do. This OTA should work for you. It's very important. Please read the screen. They want you to rerun calibration and bed leveling after installing the firmware. Here is a notice if the fluid mainsail has been installed. The update will not delete it, but it will overwrite its configuration. Please save your configuration file before proceeding. Here are some of the new features. Once again, added a root account and password for root access. We now have a device name. This will help with management in Creality Print. They have now added a new function in the web user interface to exclude partial failures in batch printing. To turn that on, you need to head over to your experimental settings and check exclude objects. This will allow you to choose an object during printing and tell the printer to cease printing that particular file. For example, if you're printing 10 coins and one coin fails, you can stop printing that coin so the printer doesn't continue trying to print that object, oozing PLA out of the nozzle onto nothing and dragging it around to the remaining models that otherwise would have been printing fine. You have the ability to roll back your firmware. You have the ability to connect to hidden networks. You have the ability to connect to public networks and they have added a check for the available storage on your machine. Should you have less than one gigabyte of space, you will get a notification once a day. Once you reach less than 500 megabytes, you will get a notification once an hour. They have also added a few new items for us. The machine will now have a few new files on board. One is this scraper taken straight from Thingiverse. Another one is a side spool holder taken from printables. There are a ton of spool holders available to side mount on your K1. I use a very simplistic one that works very well. Creality has added one here that's even simpler than the one I use. It is a single bar with two screw holes and a notched mount that your current spool holder will lock into. To install this, you will need two M316 or M318s. Remove the two currently on the printer and simply install the new spool holder, locking the original holder into that model. For the K1, I would leave the back of the printer as is. For the K1 Max, they suggest popping this little clip off the printer. If you do not have M3 screws lying around your workshop, you can visit your local Home Depot. They do indeed have screws that fit. Now we're moving on to some of their improvements to current features. They have improved the time-lapse process on the K1 Max to improve proper ending frames. In other words, your time lapses won't cut out early. They have optimized the sync between the app and the printer, and they mention improved display effects and text on some user interface pages. I'm not exactly sure which ones those are, but it sounds like they've made it easier to see and navigate the interface when working with the camera. I was surprised to see the K1 Max actually received a whole list of updates on its own. They have improved spaghetti detection. This is interesting, especially for silk and transparent filaments. Two is in reference to number one, improving the accuracy of the AI regarding black filaments. So basically they've improved the detection of transparent silk and black. These are colors that are difficult for the camera to see. And it's nice that they have worked on ways to get around that. 
improved foreign object detection to factor in various build services, including those applied with glue. So they're basically teaching the machine not to be confused by specific services or by glue on your print bed, detecting them as foreign objects or being unable to detect foreign objects on those services. This past week, my K1 did indeed notify me that I left a support on my print bed and did indeed save me from potentially damaging my printhead. I'm not entirely sure what's happening here in number four, but they optimized the process to deal with an auto leveling failure in the boot up process. I think this is a translation issue. I am assuming what they are trying to say is if the bed has some form of movement failure during the startup of the machine, there is a process now that it will initiate to resolve this. Number five talks about avoiding the camera's blind spot to detect foreign objects. Not sure how that works. We will have to take their word for it. And number six, we now have a regular and professional mode for AI. I am assuming professional mode gives us new options to manually initiate or disable. They don't go into any further detail to tell us what those are. I guess we will have to switch on professional mode and find out ourselves. There are a slew of bug fixes. Let's look at some of the more interesting and important ones, starting with number one. Some people experienced issues where there was a mesh error causing the nozzle to grind into their print bed. I never saw this issue myself. I have seen reports from others that have. Number two, looks like a basic user interface error that they resolved where previous information stayed on the screen after you moved on to your next print. Fix the issue that motors are not disengaged when the pre-print calibration has been stopped. I guess the steppers were staying active instead of disabling. Fix the issue that the pre-print calibration doesn't take effect when a print task is started from the history record. In other words, should you open your history, choose a print you previously completed, and select it to reprint that model, the calibration would not initiate. Number six, resolved an issue where you were unable to abort the print during the first layer if it was running an inspection. Number seven, they fixed an error caused by repeatedly plugging and unplugging the USB drive. Why would you do this? Number eight, fixed the system error caused by excessive memory usage of AI LiDAR algorithm. Number 10, sometimes when exporting a file to your USB drive, it would create a temp file instead of the actual file. Number 14, some of you using really long G-code files may have had issues printing them from the USB. This has been resolved. 18 through 20 all revolve around the user interface, jumping to incorrect screens when touching certain icons. And number 22 is fixing occasional disconnects of the camera on the K1 Max. And that's it, a pretty significant firmware update showing us that Creality is indeed still remaining serious and dedicated to the K1 line. This firmware resolves a lot of problems users have been experiencing while adding some new toys and enhancing some of our currently available toys. I know some of you are hesitant to install new firmwares. I will be installing mine right now. If you install your firmware, let me know how it goes in the comments and I will see you there. Hey.